is a group that has malice aforethought and has planned to launch these assets in a way that would look like 100% like an attack on our planet or on human assets, calling it alien when it's being run by people. But it's very sophisticated and we should not underestimate their capacity. Back some years ago, um, I hosted at, in Washington prior to the uh, National Press Club event uh, in 2001, a private briefing for Congress that was at the Weston Hotel in Georgetown. And there were a number of people there and chairman of committees. And uh, Edgar Mitchell was there as my guest. Uh, he's passed on now. And uh, one of the gentlemen who was there was a man who was, uh, had been on an interagency committee in 1974. Now, this is 42 years ago. And the testimony he was going to provide to those members of Congress and other people, there was a science advisor for Vice President Al Gore there, all kinds of folks, uh, was that we had this capability I'm telling you about today and that all they would have to do is push a button, boom, and the entire event would roll out. And he said, everyone on planet Earth would be fooled. Now, if I had heard that only from one person, I would have discounted it as madness. I've heard it from one person after another, after another, after another, after another, on a granular level. And now we have an Air Force Office of Special Investigations counterintelligence officer confirming the false flag operations, but he would not discuss, he says, that's still very secret, that's very secret, I can't talk about that. We have it on camera jumping out of his skin because I asked the question in a way that he understood. Do you know about the deceptive INWs and the false INWs? No one else running the cameras knew what that term meant. He did. Now, what happens then when you have a black operation that is so secretive that they could pull off a stunt like this. It means they could stampede the entire world into an Independence Day, like the movie, event. Has this already been beta tested? Yes. So they beta tested and have been testing on the public sightings that are man-made UFOs, often piggybacking on sightings of actual ET craft so that people are confused don't have any discernment. They've also been involved in using first the stagecraft of little people, <laughs> and I mean no offense to short people, I know sometimes people get prickly when I talk about this because I'm 6'4", but um, special operations folks who are under five feet and with certain makeup and masks on these anti-gravities who would go then and abduct people. So there have been abduction squads which are also confirmed by this Air Force intelligence officer that have been operative for decades. And when it has suited the intelligence community, they have engaged in human abductions that 100% fool those poor victims who really think they were abducted by an ET. And they weren't, but it sure looks like it. Now, there are two modalities used here. The aircraft itself, which is an anti-grav, the stagecraft initially were special operations personnel who now they have robotic ones that look actually like certain species of ETs, the extraterrestrial biological entities, even the Evens. But they're man-made. I know several people who worked on making these creatures, and they've been called programmed life forms but they have integrated circuits in their neural complex. They're 100% man-made, but they would fake, they would absolutely fool 99.999999 to out to 100 decimal points, uh, anyone in the public, that it was extraterrestrial. Those are fully operational, have been for decades. The early ones were these more clumsy attempts. It's also done in, in uh, association with electromagnetic weapon systems that alter awareness, can make you black out, uh, and also certain chemicals, drugs, canisters that will be thrown and the person will then pass out, 
have no memory of what happened and then awaken with this other event happen, having been abducted by an extraterrestrial. Now this gets more complex. And we haven't scratched the surface. And I don't know how disturbed you are yet, but it's going to get worse. Take a deep breath. So in 1989, uh, there was a guy named Mikhail Gorbachev, who was head of the Soviet Union. And then during the late, that period of the Bush era, President Bush, George H.W. Bush, not W, but George H.W., elder, who had been CIA director. And he was a mid-level person on this magic committee, majority intelligence committee, or majestic. And he and Gorbachev and the Paris de Cuellar, who is the Secretary General of the United Nations, and others were planning to disclose that we weren't alone in an event, a disclosure event. Uh, in uh, November of 1989, Paris de Cuellar was abducted out of his motorcade at about 3 a.m. in New York City by aliens. Now, I put in parentheses aliens, meaning human assets. And he was uh, taken and on board this human-controlled abduction event and told that if he were to continue with that plan, that the aliens would abduct everyone involved, including the President of the United States. And Prince Hans Adam von Liechtenstein told me this personally, because he was personal friends with Paris de Cuellar, the UN Secretary General. And the Crown Prince of Liechtenstein said to me, this is why I don't believe you'll be successful at disclosing the extraterrestrial presence. And I just smiled, and I said, well, I believe you have it backwards. And he did not know, this was in July of 1994, of the ability of the intelligence community to set up a hoax uh, of someone like a world figure, political figure like the head of the United Nations. That actually happened. Now because of that, um, Gorbachev, Bush Sr., the President, uh, Paris de Cuellar, and others involved canceled the plans to let the public know we weren't alone because they were concerned that, and I was told, and I'm quoting by Prince Hanum von Liechtenstein, that this blew up like an atomic bomb in the Bush White House, and they said, we, we're staying out of this now. And ever since then, no one in that office has wanted to deal with this, because they don't know what's E.T. and now what's human. And the stagecraft and the ability to interfere with plans by people who are congressmen or UN secretary generals or presidents is so great that none of them want to risk that happening to them. Because in those elite circles, trust me, because I go to, have been in meetings, those folks don't want that to happen to them. Or worse. This is why, you know, when I got this information to President Bill Clinton via his CI director, two months or a month later, his a very good friend of the Clinton family came to my home and said, well, they, don't, uh, they really support what you're recommending, but they're afraid that if President Clinton does this, he will end up like Jack Kennedy. And I laughed. I thought he was joking. And he says, what are you laughing at? I'm being serious. He, this guy was a jokester sort of bag man for the Democratic Party fundraiser. And I said, well, if that's true, we really are in trouble. Now, that was in January 1994. And you can see why between December of 1993 and the summer of 1994, I was canceling my involvement in this subject. <laughs> I had to be begged to stay in it because this is very difficult. See, this is how long I've known this. To me, there are signs out there that this false flag hoaxing of an attack on the planet is close, closer than it's been in 22 years that I've been involved. 